Hey everybody out there. Um, my name is Katie and I'm an oboist living in Vermont and I'm creating a YouTube channel to um, work on reads, talk about reads, talk about some issues, um, the ins and outs of being a musician, um, and the ins and outs of being an oboist. So there will be some performance videos posted here as well, and I'm hoping to do some how-to videos, some unboxings, things like that, that kind of talk about um, the basics of read making. So I was going to give a little tour of my workshop and just kind of show off um, all the equipment that I've got. Um, we start out with tube cane. Got a bunch of this stuff. And this is the magic material, Arundo Donax, which we use to make reeds. What's cool is this doesn't make just oboe reeds. We use this for English horn reeds, clarinet reeds, all different sizes of clarinet reeds, saxophone reeds, all different sizes of saxophone reeds, and bassoon reeds. So all of those reeds come from this little guy, Arundo Donax. I just call it cane normally. So when I get cane, it comes as this tube. So I got a nice supply of that. And then I kind of go through a process of, of changing the cane and working with it to make reeds. So I've got boxes that kind of I have organized my cane in. I, these were actually from a big fishing box. So you can use whatever you've got. You know, this is another box with reeds in various states of development. Um, so that's that. I have a gauge that shows me um, the diameter of the cane that I'm using when it's in the tube form. Um, because certain diameters work, certain diameters don't. For me, oboists may prefer different diameters depending on the, the reeds they're making. Um, and this way I don't waste my time with a tube that isn't the right size for what I do. Then I've got the splitter. Some people actually will split the tube using a razor. I honestly don't trust myself to do that, so I, I, I stick with my, little, my lovely splitter. Next off, I have what's called a pre-gouger. This is an older pre-gouger. It's a little device that I turn the handle and it pushes the cane through this, this blade and makes the cane the right diameter for the next step, which is gouging the cane. And this is my gouger. There he is. He's not new, he's an older gouger. He's, he's had a long, long life. And um, one of the exciting things that's going to be happening sometime this weekend um, is that I'm getting a new gouger. So I'm excited to, to uh, try that out and unbox it a little bit in front of you guys so you can see what it's like. So that's, that's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm excited about that. So next off, we've got our cane gouged. Next, we are going to shape the cane. And so to do that, I have a device called a shaper. And I also have a device called an easel. So the easel is to um, kind of thin the center of the cane down and find, see there's a line right here, find where the middle point is on the cane so that I'm folding it. When I shape it, I'm folding it in the right direction. So what we do is you take the cane and you fold it over the shaper and then you use a razor to trim it down on the side so it's the, the, the proper shape. So after we have gouged and shaped it. We have a few more tools. This of course, this is my tool kit, which is cool. Oh, I forgot one tool actually, that's a pretty cool tool. So gouging is extremely important to the reed and how the reed works, how the reed vibrates. And so, but it's, but it's a very, very subtle thing. Everything oboe is subtle. There, there's nothing straightforward about reed making. There's nothing really straightforward about processing cane. There's nothing straightforward about the instrument itself, even instrument repairs. It, it's, it's a delicate thing. It's, everything is about subtlety. So when we measure the gouge, we use a thing called a micrometer because we are looking at hundreds of millimeters to make the gouge the proper size for the reeds. So mind blowing at first, but that's one of the tools. 
So in my toolkit that I bring and carry around with me and bring to gigs and all of that good stuff, I have some basic things so that if I have a read that goes completely to pieces, I've got some equipment that I can use to um, to make it to try to bring a read back or to finish a read that's almost done so I've got something that works. Also, as a freelancing musician living out in Vermont in the middle of not really the middle of nowhere, but some might call it the middle of nowhere. I have to be prepared to travel. Um, and so having my read kit with me is very important when I'm traveling, you know, an hour, hour and a half, maybe even four hours away um, to play a concert where I actually need to keep on working on my reads throughout that process. So the toolkit contains probably the most important piece of equipment, my knife. So this is a reed knife. I've got a couple different kinds, and I've used a few different kinds um, throughout my life. I've got, this was the reed knife that I really grew up using. It's, it's called a beveled knife because one side is flat and one side has an angle to it. I don't know if you can see it as well. Yeah, I guess you can see that. So this is relatively easy to sharpen um, because you keep the flat side flat you keep the bevel side um, flat to this angle that's cut here. But I found um, that over time, I found that I, it's not as good for fine finishing, you know. Um, I use it often for the very beginning of my read, but I don't use it as much once I'm putting the final touches on it or even just trying to get the read to vibrate in the first place. So the, read, the knife that I like best for this is, is this, and this is a hollow ground knife. You can see that it's like a wedge. Um, and it's a little bit trickier to sharpen because you have to sharpen it flat on one side and then tip it just a little bit and sharpen it so that it has a burr. Um, and that's what scoops the cane out. But it's it's a very nice knife. I actually, it's funny how I got it. My, my husband decided to buy me a present um, and he's not a musician. He's not an oboist. He doesn't really know much about rake, making reeds. And so he gave me a reed knife for Christmas. And I thought, yeah, you don't know anything about reed knives. How can you get... But I said, wow, this is really great. Thank you, honey. And it turned out to be the best reed knife I've ever had. So there you have it. Um, but yeah, this is my, my favorite, favorite reed knife of all time. And I've talked about sharpening a lot, so of course we have our sharpening equipment. Now I have a diamond stone. This isn't actually diamond, it's diamond dust. So for one thing it's affordable, and for another thing I can't sell it for a lot of money, so that's kind of a bummer. But this is kind of um, the very beginning of sharpening for me. I use this diamond stone, it's a tough stone. Then for the next phase of sharpening, I use an India stone. Um, which is a bit, um, it gives me the fine, I don't, this is the rough edge, I use the fine edge, and you can tell because it's all covered with, like, you can see that I've used it a lot, it's got a lot of metal inside it. So there's that, and then for little touch-ups, I absolutely love these guys. These are ceramic sharpening sticks, I've had these for decades now, I bought them back when I was in college, and um, they're really good for just a quick touch-up, because one of the most important things that you can do is have a sharp knife when you're making reeds. So reed knife, another cute little piece of equipment is a plaque. And this is colored blue. It's extremely thin, extremely fine. Um, and it's colored blue so that I can put it between the blades of the reed and it, tell, it shows me how thick or thin the reed is tip is in particular so that I can see where it needs to be kind of thinned out. It also protects. So when I'm working on a reed, it's got two blades. It's a double reed. Can we see that? Nah, not really. I'll, I'll go into this more in another video, I guess, but it has two blades. You place the plaque in between the blades. I'm working on the blade that's facing me and the plaque is protecting the, the blade that's behind me or behind it, behind the plaque. All right, so that's the plaque. And then we have the mandrel, a lovely mandrel. And the mandrel is used especially when we're wrapping the reed. You put a staple on that. So I'll show you. I've got my, my trusty staples here. Lovely little staples. And 
these are brand new so they're they're just beautiful like the 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 brass on them is super clean and it's got this lovely shine and it's all gold and pretty um anyway that fits on the mandrel and then when i'm wrapping the reed i i simply place the cane over that and wrap it so mandrel and then the last of uh well no, next to last i have my chopping block Ta -da. So we absolutely put our reeds on the chopping block when we need to make them a little bit shorter. And this is a ruler. <laughs> very technical term. Um, it's a ruler that is very clear in millimeters. So um, if you are setting yourself up for um, working on reeds, not necessarily making them, but maybe adjusting them. These are the basics. The three basics or the four basics that you need are your mandrel, your knife, your plaque, and your chopping block. With those four pieces of equipment, you can adjust your reeds and make them work better for you. I would honestly suggest a ruler as well because you can be measuring and seeing how long is this reed compared to that reed. You know, where, you know, did I make whatever adjustment that I made on this reed compared to that reed? Which reed works better for me? Um, it's just a good way to kind of keep it a little bit, um, keep like a record of what you're doing. So that's that's like the the basic toolkit of the obelisk. Oh, and of course, pencil. Um, so that's the toolkit I carry around with me. The other stuff that you wouldn't necessarily need unless you're actually making reeds um, was all of that, you know, the, the gouger and the pre-gouger and all that stuff. But also the reed wrap, which is my, I think, the funnest thing about the oboe. So I've got some cool variegated reed wrap various colors la la um, and then i've got the basic red which i've got a ton of the basic red so i have to use the basic red even if i kind of enjoy the others a little bit more um, and the fun thing about the variegated reed wrap is is that um not only is it pretty because it's pretty um it's also practical i've got a couple of reads this one i have not finished mm -hmm. and this one i have finished and these are both made using this reed wrap um, and so it's easy to tell them apart so once these are finished it can be really hard to tell them apart but if i was in a situation where it's like oh my gosh i'm in a hurry i've got to get a different read this read's not working or i know that this is the good read and i grab it i'm not looking and thinking wait wait a second is this the one that was a little bit short is this the one where the wrap went around the side no i can be like oh pink on top that's the read Ooh, maroon on top that's the read it just makes it easier to tell the difference because yeah they just yeah they're, they're little tricks that that help when it comes to at least lowering also your stress level you know i know which read works better for me and i can even see it i can tell which one it is i think that's everything that i've got here um to show you that has to do with making oboe reads um it's kind of a lot of stuff but it all serves a purpose and like I said, if you're just trying to adjust reads or if you're even exploring finishing profiled reads, um, that's kind of the basics of what you need. Um, you don't necessarily need the gouger and the, um, the reed wrap and the staples um, unless you're planning on actually taking reads from tube to read. So I'll do a little video on, on how each of those processes work. Um, and I'm also planning on doing an unboxing video for the new gouger. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like, please hit subscribe, please comment. I would love to get feedback. And um, hopefully I can make this into a regular thing and um, get some more instruction about making reads out there. Thanks a lot for checking in with me. Bye.